The problem we will be solving can be found in the book Fundamentals of Physics by Halliday, Resnick, and Jerry Walker, 9th edition, page 111, problem 51. Figure 547 shows two blocks connected by a cord of negligible mass that passes over a frictionless pulley, also of negligible mass. The arrangement is known as Atwood's machine. One block has mass M1 equal 1.30 kilograms. The other has mass M2 equal 2.80 kilograms. What are A, the magnitude of the block's acceleration, and B, the tension in the cord? Now we will proceed with problem 51 and part A. Here I have a representation of the Atwood's machine, which for now we will call it the system. Part A says find the magnitude of the block's acceleration. <clears throat> Here I have the system of mass M1 and M2 which are given. Mass M1 is 1.3 kilograms and mass 2 is 2.8 kilograms. We will begin by drawing three body diagrams of each. But before that we want to choose a coordinate system. Now let's say M1 has the tendency to accelerate upward. Well, we would choose that this direction of acceleration will be positive. So if this accelerate upward in the positive direction, this will accelerate downward in the positive direction. Also will be positive because it is accelerating in the same direction as M1, clockwise. If the system has the tendency to accelerate counterclockwise, we will designate that direction of acceleration negative. So let's proceed with the free body diagrams. I will begin with mass 1 and I will, will represent it here as a dot. This is mass 1. Now I will draw here this force vector which represents the gravitational force or the weight of that mass which is given by mass 1 times acceleration due to gravity. We also have the tension force which is acting upward. Okay, so we have the tension force here. We will label that tension T. Okay, this is tension T. Right here, I will write the equation in the y direction or Newton's second law in the y direction. Now, we said that if the system has a tendency to accelerate the clockwise direction, it will be positive. So that means up will be positive and down will be negative for this mass M1. Okay, so up is positive, T1, because of course this tension is applying a force to mass 1 and with a tendency to accelerate it up or clockwise. So we have the sum of the forces, the y direction is equal to T minus M1G equals, well if this is the net force, the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So this is the net force and is equal to mass times acceleration. So let's go to mass M2 and draw a free body diagram. So for mass M2, we will represent as a dot. We have the gravitational force or the weight coming from the center of gravity. And we have this tension right here, T. And of course we have the weight here, M to G. Now, T is equal in magnitude to the other tension T we have here. And the reason why they're equal in magnitude is because this Atwood machine does not exhibit any friction. That means the tension and acceleration will be the same in both cases. So now we have T and 2G. So this is mass 2. Mass 2, if it's tending to accelerate downward, now it will be positive for mass M2 and upward will be negative, of course. This tension is applying a force to mass M2 tending 
to cause a upward or counterclockwise acceleration. So, in this case, this will be negative t. So we have that the sum of the forces here, the y direction is equal, well, t is negative, so we have minus t plus mass 2 times acceleration to the gravity, which is the weight, is equal to mass times acceleration, okay? Mass times acceleration, this is for the second mass, and this is for the first mass. So now, let's put these two equations in one paper. So what we have here is for the first mass is the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to t minus m1g equals mass times acceleration. Sum of the forces the right in the y direction for the second mass is minus t plus m2g equals m2a. Now, what we have constructed here is a system of equations of two equations and two unknowns. Our unknowns are t, which is the tension, and a, the acceleration. We are interested in solving for a, the acceleration of the system. Okay? We will proceed now by solving the system of equations. If this equation is true and this equation is also true, that means the sum of these two equations is true. I'm going to add here on the left side both of these equations. So I have the first part of the equation, which is t minus m1g. I'm going to add it to the second part of the equation on the left side, minus t plus m2g equals. On the right side, I have m1a plus m2a. Now, notice that T is positive here and is negative here. These cancel each other out. And we're left with minus M1G plus M2G on the left side. So minus M1G plus M2G on the left side. And on the right side, we have a common factor of acceleration or A. We will factor that one. So A, pull it out, M1 plus M2. Now, Rearranging on the left side, putting all the positive terms first, followed by the negative terms, and factoring out the common factor of G, the acceleration of gravity. We obtain on the left side that G multiplied by M2 minus M1 is equal to the acceleration multiplied by mass 1 plus M2. Solving algebraically for the acceleration, we will divide both sides of the equation by the product um, this parenthesis m1 plus m2 the sum is in this parenthesis so we will have the acceleration a is equal to g multiply m2 minus m1 divided by m1 plus m2 this is the acceleration of the system okay so now we know that m1 is 1.3 kilograms and then 2 is 2.8 kilograms. Substituting these values into our equation here for A, we get that 9.8 multiply M2 minus M1 or 2.8 minus 1.3 kilograms divided by the sum of the two, 2.8 plus 1.3, we obtain the numerical value of the acceleration 3.58 or 3.6 meters per second squared this is the numerical value so we have solved part A which is the acceleration notice that 3.6 is positive this means that the system has the tendency and will accelerate in the clockwise or positive direction that we have chosen for our acceleration. Now, if we go to any of these equations and solve algebraically for t to find the tension, we will obtain the same value. I will do it with equation 1. t minus m1g equals m1 a. Solving for t, 
right here on the side, solving for t. If I add on both sides m1g, I will obtain that t is equal to, well, m1 will be a common factor. We know that t is equal to m1g plus m1a. Okay, we have a common factor of m1. I'm going to put this equation here, t for tension. We have tension t is equal to, remember, our common factor here is m1. I'm going to pull it out, m1, and we have g plus a. So this right here is the magnitude of the tension in the core, and it's given by multiplying the mass m1, which we are given 1.3 kilograms times acceleration due to gravity plus the acceleration of the system itself 3.6 meters per second squared and our answer is 17.42 but let us keep two significant figures 17 newton so for part a we found that the acceleration of the system has a magnitude 3.6 meters per second squared direction clockwise and the tension in the cord is 17 newtons.